Hello and welcome to the Sci Guys, the show where we talk about the crazy, weird, and wonderful stories from the science world. I'm Corey, and as always, I'm joined by my co-host, Luke Cutford, Hello. and this week's special guest, the fifth Sci Guy, Noah Vince. Hey! hey. This week we're talking about silly shrooms and psychedelic science, but first we have a wee review. This one comes from the Netherlands. It says, best one out there. It's five stars and goes on to say, when I found out about this podcast, I couldn't stop listening. Instead of listening to music, I mostly listen to this amazing podcast. Perfect to have on around in the background or just to laugh and learn something new at the same time. Great podcast. Ah, thanks. Very nice. What do you think of the podcast? Eh, It's so-so. I wouldn't spend five years doing it, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got a question for you both and everyone who's watching or listening. Now, if you are listening on Apple or anywhere that isn't Spotify, really, uh, you want to answer this question, you go to YouTube, you go down to the comments, you can do that. Or what you could do is dig into the ground. Just dig, dig, dig deep down and then just curl up into a ball until you form into like, you know, a very a spore like thing, I guess. Um, and just wait there. Stay dormant for a long, long time, okay? Um, and then at some point, your time will come, you'll sprout, and you can answer the question. The question oh. is, have you ever had truffles or magic mushrooms? No. Well, no, right now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That was a very confusing answer, Luke, but um, <laughs> that leads me on to my next point, which is a quick disclaimer. I need to read that out. For everyone, this disclaimer is, before we hop into this very special episode, we can't stress enough that this is not intended to promote or encourage illicit drug use or recreational drug use. Uh, We're recording this episode uh, to demonstrate its effects in a controlled environment under supervision and with our vitals like heart rate and whatnot being measured. Uh, (laughs) How do you measure measure whatnot? (laughs) All of us here at SciGuy strongly encourage you to follow your local laws and partake only when it is legal and safe for you to do so. Shall we start the episode yeah (laughs) if it wasn't clear so with that i think we should start on a very basic question what are mushrooms mushrooms or magic mushrooms mushrooms the the muggle variety yes fungi yes thank you i am a flowering body (laughs) they are they're the flowering body of a wider organism a fungus what's it called like there's a thing that's under the ground and it's got this like system no it's like the main thing it's like the my, main thing my coat my my mitochondrial my, mat mitochondrial mat mycelium mycelium yes mycelium. thank you very much mycelium. off the camera person <laughs> um yes mycelium and then and then that, that sends up these little uh this little guys these little fruiting bodies that go oh hello but they're not like the main event they're like the npcs they're like the sex parts basically they're the sex parts they yeah. shove their dicks into the sky but the mostly they're under the ground yes <laughs> They do look like dicks as well. They do. Like, sometimes. (laughs) So, yeah, mushrooms are, like, usually... (laughs) They're (laughs) umbrella-shaped fruiting bodies of certain fungi. So not all fungi uh, produce mushrooms, but uh, certain fungi do. Yeah, I don't. (laughs) 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 Let me see under your armpit. (laughs) You may be fruity, but you're definitely not a fun guy. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) <laughs> so there are over 144,000 known species of fungus. What? Yeah. It's a big th- it's a whole kingdom, isn't it? There's animalia, there's uh plant and oh. there's <laughs> there's two. <laughs> there's two 144,000. There's fungus. Is it like saying mammals? Or is it like saying uh animals? It's like saying animals. Whoa. Yeah. So fungi are neither plants nor animals. Um they include yeasts. Um uh mildews molds mushrooms many many different things can be a fungus and they don't all necessarily look very similar now uh before uh in the past people thought that fungi were plants which makes sense i mean we still kind of consider them to be plants right now i mean if you look at plant-based foods a lot of them have mushrooms in right Mm -hmm. are mushrooms plants no so are plant-based foods alive they're not plant-based foods exactly plant and fungus based i got so many lawsuits to file (laughs) (laughs) every meal i've had for like 10 years but like seriously (laughs) though i'm actually curious as to whether you could do something about that because if they're no okay if they're pushing back on you know cheese uh vegan cheese being called cheese because it's not made from animal milk yeah then surely we should all be pushing back on plant-based foods being called plant-based when they have mushrooms in them to be fair as well like if something was going to have feelings between plants and mushrooms it would be mushrooms yeah i agree well because they they yeah they are but yeah. mushrooms are kind <laughs> of contribution now. <laughs> no, sorry. They're just, they're cute, you know. That's like what like we keep Noah around for. He's a fun guy, and right? We all, we all know conscious experience directly correlates with how cute you are. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> obviously. 
<laughs> oh god so we thought that fungi were plants but they're actually not they're kind of like more uh, they're like orcs to they're the like plants aliens. elves mm. i guess right they're distinct in a bunch of different ways right they've got um <laughs> they don't have <laughs> Orcs. <laughs> They're like orcs. Is this a Lord of the Rings reference? I mean, it's a, a high fantasy reference, okay. but yeah, Lord of the Rings also. Yeah, I've seen that movie once. High <laughs> <laughs> uh, But yeah, no, uh, they are very distinct from plants. They've got differences in their cell walls and membranes. They've got um, a few different things. Like the way that they get nutrients is different. So um, they kind of, I, I, I'm pretty sure they basically spew stuff over food mm. and then absorb the food into themselves they grow really weirdly it's actually the way that they grow is really interesting it, it it's why they're able to replicate meat so well uh, a lot of mushrooms um because fungi grow in filaments so um they grow from like the tips of these hyphae they're called um and they yeah they basically digest organic matter so like living not necessarily living stuff but like you know um stuff from living things trees and stuff yeah trees people you know <laughs> all of the things yeah yeah um they digest that externally and then absorb it in and then they grow in like filaments that's kind of wow. cool so they have like all the stomach acid equivalent like outside of them yeah it's just acid i suppose so they're not there's full no stomach of gross gunk they're just people <laughs> <laughs> they spit you like, like things and they're you, like oh, my God. it really feels <laughs> like you are a mushroom like disguised as a person right now <laughs> trying to like yeah so they're not like disgusting like they're pretty i guess they're pretty you know like, i just thought they were always so cool like me, <laughs> <laughs> no no like we me and my brother would like go into the woods and we'd build like stuff out of um like wooden sticks like huts you know mm -hmm. you'd make like a camp there'd always be those mushrooms and we'd like squish them because there are some that like go poof and all our friends were like, that's so gross. I'm like, no, it's cool. Wow, uh, mushrooms hate crime to you when yeah. you were younger? What? <laughs> <laughs> they went, poof. They went, poof. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> I, I still don't think he's getting it, but. <laughs> no, I do, I do, but. Poof. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, poof. Yeah, Did you just it. say I told you he hadn't got it. He hadn't got it. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, that's mushrooms. But what are truffles? Do either of you know? I know that pigs sniff them out real good. No. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, like, <laughs> no. <laughs> sorry, like... Not, yes, 100%. So not yes. to be that guy, but not all truffles. Um, oh, come I, I think on. they only smell the truffles that we, we like eating. They don't necessarily smell all truffles. Because <laughs> the truffles we like eating are really smelly, right? Yeah, sure, but like pigs, to do, like what he said isn't... Are you great. underplaying yeah, yeah. the scent I don't, of pig? Okay, can, I, can, I be, the, the can I be the sort of mediator here? Yeah. I want to be clear. I don't think what Noah was saying was the sole defining <laughs> trait of a truffle is <laughs> that <laughs> pigs are used I said, to sniff them out. I know that pigs sniff them out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, fair. No, cool. <laughs> I just don't think that's how they harvest the truffles. Is this a truffle? I don't know. Get the pig. Yeah. <laughs> they're in a little judge suit. <laughs> <laughs> a little... Yeah. He uh, says it's a truffle. It's a truffle. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah I was going to make a joke about pigs dressing up um, in police uniforms that felt like it was in poor taste. <laughs> Yeah, uh, but back to truffles and mushrooms. Do you know uh, what the difference between uh, truffles and you know mushrooms or other sorts of fungi? Yeah, are? well, they grow on the ground. Yes, uh, and like on the roots, I think. Yeah, they can grow like underground on the roots of trees, the ones that we eat, but they don't necessarily have to. I don't mm. think. Uh, but no, um, a truffle is essentially a, a sclerotia um, of a fungus. Of now, what that is, um, <laughs> what that is, <laughs> is a sort of like. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's like a kind of uh, think of it as like a big sort of spore. It's like a it's a very hardy sort of dormant uh, like a base sort of form of a fungus, right? So it like it just sits and it waits, and then I think it can grow like more fungus from it. What's right? it waiting oh. for? <laughs> What's taking this time? Good times, man. You know, like <laughs> good times lead to fungi. Uh, <laughs> yeah, fungi. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Yeah, you can just about have that one. <laughs> <laughs> There's a joke in there, man. I, like, our audience is laughing. <laughs> At and with you. <laughs> That's all I ask. Uh, no, so yeah, um, uh, the the truffle is kind of like, uh, to my understanding, it's kind of like a stage in life of the mushroom or kind of like a, a part of it at a certain point, right? Mm. It's it's not um it's not like it's it's the same thing, uh, f like fundamentally, just different. Like a tadpole. 
Yeah, like you frog. can think of it like a, an, a tadpole or a, a yeah, something like that. Fungi are weird, and so it's really difficult. It feels to like kind of relate them to things that we understand because we don't innately understand fungi. I feel mm. like when you, you know people saying like, "Oh, this fungus has X number of sexes," and you're like, "What? That doesn't make any sense, yeah. right?" I yeah. say good for him or her or them. Or Zim, or, or Z, Z. Exactly. Or, <laughs> or Marcel. Marcel. <laughs> Good old Marcel. I will quote for you. Uh, sclerotum. <laughs> it's coming directly from the mushroom. So. <laughs> <laughs> so I will quote for you. Sclerotium, a persistent vegetative resting spore of certain fungi. It consists of a hard, dense, compact mycelium that make up the body of a typical fungus that varies form and has a dark colored covering. Um, it could be a few cells. It could be loads of cells um, from, like, you know, uh, it, you could find them up to, like, 10 centimeters big as well. So they're kind of like a spore, if you think of it that way, right? It's just kind of laying dormant, mm. waiting for good times to, to like, become. To jump out and scare you. Boo! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, it, it probably take a while to grow, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah plants eat, kind of do that as well, don't they? Like, they, they sit and wait, and then they... When something happens to trigger their beginning, then mm -hmm. they will. Then will they'll do it. Yeah, I think plant seeds. I think crucially, plant seeds are, you know, like baby plants, if that makes sense. Whereas I, I feel like this is more uh, like uh, an onion or a daffodil bulb, right? Mm. Or tulip bulb, I guess. Is they have bulbs, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, that shoot up. They're not. They're not um, necessarily like uh, from sex parts <laughs> of the species. It's kind of like. A dormant state it goes into mm. so magic mushrooms let's get to those what are magic mushrooms noah do you have any idea they make you think funny things no <laughs> 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 i don't know can it's I just, almost as good as pigs i think them. we need to <laughs> I think we need to release a dictionary that is just <laughs> like a word and then noah's definition of the word what is truffle pigs find them <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like when you're asking you're asking what is this thing and noah's giving you a list of features of the thing <laughs> 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 Magic mushroom, they've got psilocybin in them, so they make you hallucinate. Psilocybin. Psilocybin. Mm. Yep. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Fully, I mean, that is fully probably, defined, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so magic mushrooms are a hallucinogen. They contain psilocybin, psilocybin, however you want to say it. I don't really care. Um, and some of them contain something else. Luke, do you know what that is? No. Psilocin. Have you heard oh, of it? Oh, yeah. I don't know what it does. There. Is it like the CBD of the mushroom world? We'll find out okay. in a little bit. <laughs> so, um, yeah, uh, there, uh, there are loads of these kinds of mushrooms. Dozens, hundreds, one could even say. They belong to the same <laughs> genus. The genus is psilocybe or psilocybe. Uh, some people might say. Um, uh, you're, they're usually pretty small. So the average size is uh, a seven and a half centimeter stalk and a two and a half centimeter cap. So they're seven and a half centimeters tall and two and a half centimeters wide. Does that yes. make sense? Are we, yes. are we picturing this? Like <laughs> yeah, that's, that's so head. descriptive. So, yeah. so if we want a seven and a half centimeters, we just take the size of my penis and take off about half of that. <laughs> um, and <laughs> okay, yep. I Wait, I was thinking it. inches. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> They're pretty small. On average, they're about seven and a half centimeters uh, tall, the stalk, and two and a half centimeters wide. And look, I'll say this, seven and a half centimeters, plenty. You don't need <laughs> any more. In fact, you could do with a few centimeters less than that. I think seven and a half, that's too much, <laughs> some yeah, people say. Maybe, yeah. I, one, two is even fine. It's okay. It, it's okay. I, it's more than okay. <laughs> um, and when they're fresh, they yep. usually have a light grayish, yellowish, or brownish stem. I personally have a brownish stem. <laughs> 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 um, and this one is me as well. Uh, brown or brown and white caps and dark gills. Very, I've got a white cap, dark <laughs> oh, gills, no. a I brownish stem. I don't want to... Oh, no. <laughs> um, and they're not the only hallucinogenic mushrooms. Uh, no, uh, so there are other hallucinogenic mushrooms that are, uh, with different hallucinogenic compounds. They're usually um, not as strong or the, the, the compounds are very, very different. And so some people... Purists, I've heard them described as, would uh, say that the only magic mushrooms are the ones that have uh, psilocybin in them, uh, the ones from that family. Yeah. You look so deep in thought. I was, I'm now starting to feel it. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing to take away from this is that magic mushrooms are hallucinogens because of the psilocybin and psilocin that they have in them. That's what makes them magic mushrooms. Now, if we talk about the usage of them, right, uh, if we look at the 2018 National Survey on Drug Use and Health in the US, about 1.3% of adults over the age of 26 um, reported to using mm. any hallucinogen in the past year. That's a lot. <laughs> That's a lot of people. Millions. If we look at the UK, though, one in a hundred people in, in, in England. 
Sorry. But if we look at the UK, right, or just England and Wales, uh, in 2023, uh, one in a hundred adults um, reported using uh, magic mushrooms. Or, mm. sorry, m- reported using hallucinogens, right? Um, and magic mushrooms, uh, they've just skyrocketed in use in the past little while. So, um, from the ONS, uh, the Office the office of National <laughs> Statistics. Statistics? Mm-hmm. Why are those are such difficult words? Office of National Statistics. Why are those? Statistics. Oh, my God. Office wh- of National Statistics. <laughs> <laughs> so, the ONS, the yeah. Office of National Statistics. Good job. Thank you very much, Noah. Um, first time, right? <laughs> um, that would... <laughs> They say that about uh, 260,000 people um, from the age of 16 to 59 have taken magic mushrooms in the past year. Um, and yeah, that's like obviously a ton of people for mm. the UK, right? Our population mm. is a lot smaller than the US. So 260,000, quarter of a mil, loads, right? Um, and that was uh, 100,000 more than in 2020. So in 2023, like 260,000, that has risen 100,000 in mm. like just a couple years um oh, yeah i know right it's insane That's a lot. oh mm, no. are you gonna say the pandemic yeah you're gonna say people stuck inside yeah. and like oh we're only let's go out oh what are these things growing and then they just <laughs> <laughs> we have fun at home <laughs> <laughs> don't need to see people we imagine them do you miss going outside do you want to feel like you're <laughs> do you want to feel one with nature again <laughs> <laughs> we want to go touch a tree but in your mind <laughs> Um, yeah, um, and usually uh, they are sold. Uh, they're sold illegally, but usually they're sold in the form of just you know dried mushrooms. But you can also have them ground up and made into a sort of tea-like mm. thing. Um, put them into capsules, um, and some people snort them as a powder. Whoa! One thing I will say: I don't know why you would do this, um, <laughs> but specifically never inject them because people have died from doing okay, that. Okay, that's good. I don't know why know. you would choose injection as your <laughs> mode of choice when there are several other yeah. easier options and also again a illegal drug that you should not be doing yeah but um wh- why would you go to that the hardest and most dangerous way of, of <laughs> putting mushrooms in your veins yeah hold on let me just go shoot up some mush people shoot up <laughs> i other want to things. become an a plant a fucking <laughs> fungus <laughs> Exactly, but people shoot up other things because it's like the easiest and quickest way of getting it into your system. I think I think if you're drinking a tea or eating something, go, do it that way. If, yeah. that's the, if that's an option, take that. Um, and we should talk about the legality, right? So do you know anything about the legality of these mushrooms? I think they're Schedule 1 and Class A in the UK. Yeah, so... Uh, in the US. Yes, yeah, so I'm pretty, they're, the, they're very, very legal in the UK and US. Uh, and the Netherlands, where we are right now, they've outlawed them since December 2008. My hands feel so small. <laughs> <laughs> like okay, so Uncle Jack, small. fucking... No, <laughs> <laughs> they all looking kind of small today. Yeah, like Wait, just, where? just, just put your hand up against, put your hand up against mine. Uh, like, no, close your eyes, close your no. eyes. Give me, give me as, your as my, my body feels so weak and like, like I'm just holding it up. There we go. Look, look Noah. Oh, see wow. what life saving work, gender reaffirming. See, look, look how big your hand is. Surgery. <laughs> I hate that even that's, <laughs> that's made me infinitely more uncomfortable than, <laughs> than anything else. Look what I could have had! <laughs> I, I, I'm not upset about it. They just feel so tight. I feel like I've got like little doll claws. hands on my little hands. Why are we not putting this shit in the episode? It's so funny. He says I'm not. <laughs> okay, yeah. Oh no! <laughs> How you know it? Yes, my hands are very small today. Yeah, you <laughs> <laughs> they feel very small. <laughs> they don't look small, but they feel it. <laughs> no, they look small. <laughs> Dingling ling, is that the ad bell? I hope so. We don't have any other bells in this room. Well, I'll tell you what we don't have in this room, Luke. We don't have people who have subscribed to Sci Guys on YouTube and followed us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. I actually have done all those things. I have too. But why don't we tell people about why specifically that is a very cool and interesting thing for them to do? Well, we want to be everywhere with you all the time. And if you're on Apple Podcasts, we want to be there with you. If you're on Spotify, we want to be there with you. And if you're on YouTube, we want to be there with you. And you probably want us to be there with you too. Even if you prefer to listen on Spotify and don't really watch us on YouTube all that much, it really helps if you subscribe on every single platform because it gets us in front of more people, which means it makes it easier to make this show, which you love, right? You love it. You love us. You love us, right? Give me love. Validate my soul. Subscribe to Sci Guys on YouTube and follow us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify right now. Heal the deep, deep chasm in my heart. Let's get back to the show. 
yeah, so where we are in the Netherlands, since 2008, possession of fresh, dry, all of the mushrooms is now illegal, right? Mm. But what's not illegal uh, are the truffles that we mentioned, right? So ah. those are kind of those are kind of a little loophole left outside of it, like a little oopsie. <laughs> you can have this. <laughs> well, it's more like we're we're looking at all of these, <laughs> and the law's not looking over there. But since <laughs> September 2019, uh, magic truffles have been fully legalized, um, and they're taxed and all that sort of stuff, right? So they're legal. Um, whereas in the UK, it's very different. In 2005, that was when uh, magic mushrooms were made illegal. 2005, Whoa. right? Yeah. So like the 90s, they were just they could just party. That you explains just, a lot. Well, I mean, <laughs> that explains a lot about if the 90s. If you think about it, they grow in the UK. Right? I mean, they grow yeah. all around the world, right? But they grow in the UK. So to outlaw them would be to kind of like, okay, you're not allowed to go and pick these things that grow, I mean, what, like in fields or forests yeah. or something, wherever mushrooms grow, I, I think guess. We do that with knotweed, don't we? What? We do that with knotweed. What, what's oh Japanese. i thought okay, luke i thought Sorry, you were saying weed. i thought you were saying like not weed you no. know like we do that with like something that, that, that isn't weed i was <laughs> like are you I, I do i guess <laughs> like, <laughs> like japanese not weed we uh, have a lot of rules around it it's like a thing that grows in the uk and we're like there's a bunch of rules because it ruins houses and stuff. yeah so the yeah so japanese not weed is, is to, i want to be clear for anyone listening who doesn't know what it is not weed turns out okay so it's totally separate from drugs um <laughs> japanese not weed is outlawed for a different reason entirely that's because it's an invasive species species yeah. in the name japanese knotweed and also uh because it will destroy houses it's like kind of like mint do you know mint how you should never ever 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 plant mint in a garden don't tell me what to do with my mint <laughs> if you would like everything in your garden to be mint then plant <laughs> mint in your garden it does as it chooses yes that's literally what <laughs> yeah, it does that's terrifying <laughs> fucking hell my hands feel heavy <laughs> Oh, wow, how are your hands feeling now? My hands feel tiny. Yeah, my hands feel so heavy and big. Like, I can't even swing them around. I feel like, I, I feel like my body is just like a, like a large cloak that's been draped over some bones. <laughs> I feel like I'm just like, I'm holding myself up by this one specific joint in my back. I'm like... Can I just say, how funny would it be if we just, like, threw to Noah every now and then? Like, Noah, check in. How are you doing? Like we're throwing in for the weather. <laughs> Over to and Noah. To Noah no, I, I can't. <laughs> cloak of skin. <laughs> I, can, <laughs> <laughs> I can have a normal conversation, but that I'm just, that is how my body feels right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? You said that in such a way, like, almost like someone on the news, like, but that is how my body feels right now. Yep. And um, on later. to the next segment. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Mint will just stick around in your garden. It is like it is very, very potent in that way. So you should always keep it in a pot, right? If you're going to grow mint, mm. Japanese knotweed will uh, destroy houses, like you say. Like it will grow into them and just tear them down. Um, and you know, it's kind of different. Like mushrooms grow just wild in the UK. Mm. Like they're they're natural. You, it's really it'd be really weird to sort of outlaw something that just naturally. And also as well, mushroom spores are what like kind of you know they grow from you can't necessarily like see those right nah, like yeah. they're pretty little and so it's going to be really hard to control mushroom growth right so you wouldn't be able to really outlaw that so since july 2005 right um psilocybin has been just outlawed either fresh or prepared right so that's in tea or uh like dried mushroom all that sort of stuff right uh before that you could you could buy mushrooms apparently like that's what? i don't know but like I mean, yeah you could uh yeah they were widely available even in shops is what Whoa. I've read, which like that's weird. I mean, I was seven. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I was, was like a little five, boy. Six. Yeah, you were slightly older. Yeah, I, I mean, I remember, for example, when I was fifteen, um, fifteen, sixteen, we could go to a shop, which I think they called like a head shop, uh -huh. um, which was like you could buy tobacco and tobacco related products, and that generally included uh experimental chemicals which they definitely shouldn't have been selling oh those, so that's different though. That, those are like legal highs but what yeah. i mean is like that was that was that was a setting in which you could buy you could something yeah. like that and and plausibly like in 2005 whatever yeah, yeah. That, that would be a place where they would sell mushrooms but it doesn't mean they were in like wh Smith. oh maybe yeah sure yeah i think they've <laughs> cracked down on that now yeah. as well though so like legal highs i think um are yeah it's now blanket illegal yeah because what would happen before i think is it would be they'd have to outlaw a sort of specific compound or yeah. group of chemicals and then they were just like no yeah some scientists were just like okay let's do 
I want hydrogen on there. Oh, it does the same thing, but now it's legal? Cool. Or even Ship people it. being like, oh, look, um, this thing in a fertilizer is similar enough. Let's see if that will... Ooh. Oh, cool, yeah. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah, oh. so you can, like, chemicals that are similar enough and you could treat them in some... Anyway, right? Not it's good. not the point. Uh, the fact is that they are illegal in the UK, a class A drug. Um, it's it, their possession, use, trade, all of that is prohibited. Um, you could still uh, <laughs> buy grow kits, though, but they don't have any psilocybin in them. For, for science? I don't know. It like it literally <laughs> says, uh, grow kits can be bought legally through specialized websites because they do not contain psilocybin. And, and what do they contain? The spores, the to, spores make to make it. Oh, but you're, yeah. oh, you're doing it for science. So you, you can grow. You can't. So growing them isn't legal, but don't you can you buy the kits. Don't put that in any mud. Don't you? A. Hey. Don't put that in any mud. Uh, you so you're being serious though. Had like, what better. Did I do? <laughs> <laughs> like, you can have those seeds, but if I see you put them near any mud, you're going down. It's like look. It's like outlawing tea. Right, you're not allowed to have a cup of tea anywhere. Here is milk. Here is a tea bag, and here is hot water. You had better not. You dare. Okay. You dare. You can have the tea bag to look at and smell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And to learn about the dangers of tea bags. Yes, <laughs> of yes. course. Right. Um, but yeah, no. Uh, it's it's kind of like that. Um, now, when do you think um, the Western world uh, sort of got wind of? mushrooms oh the 70s surely 50s the 50s yeah. we like and okay so their use uh, is ancient right so uh, in central america and some other places potentially for centuries they've been using psychedelic mushrooms mm. and these kind of mushrooms grow all around the world as well it's not like just one individual place so they grow all around the world uh, but it was in the 50s uh, gordon wasson sorry our gordon wasson took a trip to uh a place in oaxaca in mexico i, I don't want to try it it okay. looks there's too many U's. No, I think you should give it a go. <laughs> go on. Hu oh yeah. Huautla. Yeah, yeah. De Jimenez. Oh yeah. H U A U T L A. Okay. Do you want to give that <laughs> a go? Keep going. Yeah, show me the show me the word. No, no. H U A. H U A. Hua. Hua. U T L A. U. Huatla. Huat. Huatla. Look, wherever it was, it was a region in Oaxaca in Mexico. Um, now, he did this sort of ritual with psychedelic mushrooms, and he wrote about it, and that was featured in uh, Life magazine in a 1957 article. Um, and the title was Seeking the Magic Mushrooms, and that's where th the name mm. literally comes from. Oh, from that's that article. Where, yeah, that is where the that's name cool. comes from, apparently, right? And, wow. Um, so uh, R. Gordon Wasson didn't come up with the name there himself. It was, I think, an editor in uh, Life. Now, Albert Hoffman. Yeah. Do you know who that is, Luke? Yeah. He's the guy who invented LSD. The bicycle yeah. guy. LSD. Yeah, the bicycle yeah. guy. Do you know anything more about him and the bicycle? Well, he made LSD and then, like, took some and then <laughs> he took a lot <laughs> without realizing how, how strong it was and then went for a bike ride. Can I just say, right? Like, I know that wasn't in the Netherlands, but, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hallucinogens and bike riding feels very Dutch. I don't know why. <laughs> um, so, obviously, mushrooms had been used in a bunch of different societies for a long, long time, right? But it wasn't until the 50s that it was brought to the sort of western world um, and it was actually sold in a pill form apparently in the u.s uh by uh sandoz someone uh someone named sandoz lost his first name mr sandoz mr sandoz <laughs> or mrs <laughs> but it was the 50s so probably mr yeah. um and yeah so if we talk about psilocybin what is that he's a chemical and he binds to serotonin receptors in your brain I or think. she they they bind to serotonin receptors in your brain um and they make it go funky that's all I know. Basically, yeah, no. So psilocybin is produced by more than 200 species of fungi. Um, they, they like they can be grown all around the world, come in different shapes and sizes. But uh, psilocybin isn't actually the kind of main active ingredient, right? When you oh. take when you take a mushroom or you eat a mushroom or you have anything containing psilocybin, it's not the psilocybin that does anything. It's your tummy. Well, you digest it into oh, it psilocin. Something. Yeah, yeah. You, well, you, yeah, you uh, metabolize it rather, rather than digest. You mm. metabolize it into psilocin, and that's what has the sort of psychoactive effects. Yes, and it's very important to say at this point, actually, this is a, one of the reasons it's incredibly dangerous to take a psychedelic whilst you're taking monoamine oxidase inhibitors as an antidepressant, because that gets rid of something in your gut that normally does some of the digesting. Uh, or take some of the potency away. And if you have MOIs for, for depression, 
you can like you get like ten times the dose. Yeah, really like serotonin dangerous. syndrome. Mm. It's really dangerous. Okay, thank you very yeah. much. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> yeah. No. Um. And so I mean, we can kind of get into the effects right now, or we can go back and talk about how it works. I'll just quickly say uh, that it activates uh, the serotonin five H two A receptors on the pyramidal. Uh, py- Pyramidal, pyramidal, pyramidal cells of the brain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That doesn't mean anything to anyone. I didn't need to. No, pyramidal. it doesn't. No, <laughs> no, it doesn't. So the psilocin. <laughs> Sorry, it's not funny. <laughs> oh, 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 oh! So yeah, the psilocin activates the five H two A receptors on sort of cells in your brain which as you said they usually sort of take in serotonin and it it basically because those are sort of like the basic computer parts of your brain if Mm. we put it that way everything starts to go all wonky so the way that you perceive time and space and see colors and things all of that gets thrown out of whack so that's why psychedelics have such a kind of like everything effect (laughs) i'm starting to see some of that no, actually, yeah. I'm sure you are. I can yeah. I can see your fingers going, <laughs> man. Yeah. But yeah, no, so they're like they're they're where everything kinda gets kinda gets put together mm. in your brain. And so the binding starts to come loose just a little bit when you have uh psychedelics. So why don't we talk about the effects of psilocybin? Yeah, why don't we? Noah? Do you know don't about the effects of psilocybin? Me. It makes my hands look small. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I get <laughs> you get weird feelings. <laughs> weird. Don't ask me. It makes my hands look small. <laughs> so a- asking me questions makes my hands look small. <laughs> Stop it. Just strange body sensations. Yeah. That you can't quite describe and unless you're feeling them. Yeah. So um, you can have a distorted vision. So sort of hallucinations. Uh, difference in sort of colors, patterns. You can see colors and patterns and whatnot that aren't there. You can get giggly, a sort of euphoric feeling. Um, time can slow down. It can speed Don't up. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> it can time slow down. Time can slow down. It can speed up. It can speed up. And it can slow right You can down. get these sort of uh, different visual things. You can have dizziness, nausea, um, all of these sorts of effects, right? It's, it's very kind of all-encompassing. I feel like when we talk about different drugs on the podcast that there's very specific things yeah. that they kind of do. I mean, I think we kind of talk about how you can understand what a neurotransmitter does uh, based on, or what a sort of receptor for a neurotransmitter does based on what kind of drug, like what the effects of a drug are. Yeah. With psychedelics, it's like, man, they they just hit everything, it feels like. You just, know what ab- I mean? just absolutely. On the experiential side, uh, on like the effects and stuff, I just want to ask, what are you experiencing right now? Like, just subjectively, what's going on? A little, little bit of sweat. Uh, oh, nice. A little bit of, subjectively. Uh, yeah, yeah, a little bit of sweat. Uh, body feels funny. I mean, I feel it less than I did earlier. Can you can you see anything? Or could you see anything? Uh, yeah. So, like, if I look in detail on, like, the little the little log things that are on the ceiling, it feels like it has, like, little fingerprints. Whoa, what about if I do this? Uh, yeah, so it's like... <laughs> Trails. Like, Trails. it looks like my hand goes on for ages. So I, d- I don't have that. I have, it just feels really fluid mm. and, like, nice. So whilst you're talking, it almost looks like you're sort of a... Uh, I get, like, Aztec vibes. <laughs> like, um, you're sort of turning into, like, all, like, Egyptian prince vibes. Like, my brain is trying to, like, map onto you. Um, <laughs> archetypes, right? It's trying to be like, what, what am I looking at? I'm looking at... I guess like Sorry, a... Egyptian prince inbred and doesn't deserve the position they've got is the first thing that comes to my mind. Wow, Sorry, no, carry on, your, Luke. That's your self critic. You can deal with that in therapy. Um, but like, just I'm talking purely visually. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's so funny. Carry on. Um, yeah, um, but like, yeah, it's trying to map on like different archetypes onto you. Um, sometimes it looks like you have like multiple eyes, and the colors... I do have multiple eyes. <laughs> I have two. <laughs> what? <laughs> Mind blown. Okay. Um, and then the colors are a lot more vibrant. Um, and then it almost has like a sharpening filter over, yeah. over mm-hmm. everything. Things are more in focus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, that's kind of the effect there. Uh, some people smoke uh, weeds to combat the nausea because it can uh, get so bad. Um, you can have sort of muscle weakness, loss of appetite, numbness, loads of different, th- loads of different things. Um, uh, you can kind of um, 
see and hear things that aren't there. I've spoken about that sort of hallucination. So it kind of distorts your sense of reality. Um, you can kind of mix up a sort of different senses as well. So that kind of like, what's it, synesthesia? Mm -hmm. um, you can kind of get, again, I guess sort of temporary synesthesia where you think you can sort of hear colors or uh, taste colors colors are a really easy one to i don't know <laughs> taste sounds there you go and so there are also some negative effects which we'll just scoot, scoot right on through real quick yep. changes in mood lightheadedness anxiety and panic attacks confusion and disorientation fear or paranoia okay <laughs> those can all happen oh no yes so <laughs> one should be careful yeah no um but you can get facial numbness, um, increasing heart rate, uh, dry mouth, muscle weakness and twitching, convulsion, exaggerated reflexes. You can have sweating and high body temperature, and that's often followed by uh, chills and shivering. And you can have loss of urinary control as well. Oh, yeah. So those are kind of the effects, right? So we should talk maybe a little bit about the risks really quickly, right? So there's this idea of a bad trip, right? So you can have a bad trip uh, if you take it in high doses or in a bad environment where you kind of have sort of frightening, paranoid mm. experiences. Things don't feel very good, right? So you could... Um, do you could do things that could lead to you injuring yourself if you're trying to run away from something you think mm -hmm. is scary or like you're feeling like you know really out of it yeah. you can you can it can be dangerous in that way right they can cause flashbacks as well and using them with other substances can cause uh problems as well they can exacerbate existing psychiatric conditions whether you know about it or not right so if you're diagnosed or undiagnosed it's not like diagnosed yeah, it's uh, magically of course yeah. do you know what i mean but like yeah <laughs> so it can if you've got an undiagnosed and undetected condition it can exacerbate the problems of that right yeah. so we you know if if you talk about sort of schizophrenia or something it can really exacerbate your problems there um but there's no evidence of death uh caused by magic mushrooms um from an overdose right the amount yeah. of psilocybin you'd need to take to die from it is like so much more it's not space in your tummy <laughs> yeah i was gonna say <laughs> like, so how much, yeah. many do you have to eat it's <laughs> so much it's so much bigger than the normal dose yeah. that it's it, it it's not even yeah. it's not even close it's like right when we did the lsd episode and we talked about how there's like no known level about like how much LSD a person could take that would kill them. They once did it to an elephant. Yeah. I, and it yeah. was like injecting, I, I'm not even going to make a guess at the math, but like something stupendous. <laughs> um, and then, yes, the elephant did die. <laughs> um, so but, don't do that. So don't do that. And don't be an elephant. Not an elephant. <laughs> <laughs> and don't do that to your elephant. You know what? If she was, if she was just like not being an elephant, then she wouldn't have had a problem, right? <laughs> you know, like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah there's no evidence that death can be caused by taking magic mushrooms what can happen though is that you're not eating the right mushrooms that's oh, oh that no. would cause death maybe yeah so because yeah. mushrooms can be very dangerous um and this is i want to be so clear about this this is not just for foraging magic mushrooms this is for foraging any kind of fungus yeah please for the love of god don't do it unless yeah. you know what you're yeah. doing yeah. because even the number of people that have tried to forage just like you know non-psychoactive mushrooms and they died because they've gone for the wrong thing. Yeah. You are not a mycologist. <laughs> you cannot determine which mushrooms are which just from looking. Right? <laughs> you you got to use like a, a book that tells you explicitly what to look out for and what to avoid. Yeah. Um, and that's that's where the danger of magic mushrooms comes in along with you know, what we were talking Physical about earlier. Stuff. Yeah, the physical stuff. Uh, that's uh, along with what we were talking about earlier with the sort of more mental bad trip and stuff. But um, there's no studies on the long-term effects of repetitive use of uh, magic mushrooms. So we don't really think there's any huge issue with sort of using them chronically. In fact, mm. using them chronically would be kind of difficult. They don't seem to be addi uh, addictive, right? There's no evidence to say that they're addictive sort of chemically in yeah. themselves, but um, you can build up a tolerance really quickly. So if you take them one day and then take them the next day, that next day, the, the effects of it are going to be so much less uh, intense than the first day, right? Yeah, so you so can't enforce yeah periods of sobriety which is quite nice yeah yeah you can't be a chronic user and unless you're just increasing fast and maybe then you hit the um the sort of lethal dose if you just, if you just every single day trying to chip every day eventually <laughs> yeah exponentially more every day yeah, <laughs> absolutely i um, just don't think you could do it with psilocybin you could do no. it <laughs> physically you could do it with with lsd for example like mm -hmm. maybe yeah. if you're ingesting it as a liquid yeah but if you're ingesting mushrooms, so there's many. just not space. Maybe your, <laughs> maybe your addiction to mushrooms gets to the point where you have a laboratory environment to extract the psilocybin, or you could you can yes. you can have um so you would you can use a uh, psilocybin that is sort of um, not naturally produced. It's sort of man-made. That's what's mm. used in studies and whatnot as well. Okay. 
just to bring it back and set and setting is really important as well so yeah. if we talk about those bad experiences uh, the set would be your state of mind um and sort of your previous experience with psychedelics and sort of your expectations and the setting is just where you are who you're with all of that sort of thing right yeah. if both of those are good then the chances are you're probably going to be feeling pretty good like any anxieties and stuff you can kind of fixate on those and that's what causes it it's kind of like i just want to get across the idea that um magic mushrooms themselves don't just spontaneously cause people oh, yeah, to yeah. Uh, you know have horrible bad trips right um what tends to be the case is people have feelings of anxiety that are exacerbated or they're they're in a bad environment all of those sorts of things yeah. what are the weird stories you were told in school about what a psychedelic would do to you i was told that there was a man who thought he was an orange and peeled his own skin off Ah, <laughs> uh, yes um, i can't stop thinking about oh, like that I told one someone like jumped off a roof or something yeah that does yeah. happen that yeah, does, does genuinely yeah. happen yeah any weird stories well you? no actually hold on this I was going to say the orange peel one, but that you told me that about five years ago. Uh, and when I say I've not been able to stop thinking about that, like literally I, I wake up in the middle of the night, like what am if I an orange? What <laughs> if, what if I suddenly want to peel off my skin? Oh. What do I do then? Oh, okay. Right. Like I'm not an orange and I won't peel off. My skin. <laughs> <laughs> just to clarify. Just, to cla I just, just to, if you're editing this Corey, you're not an orange. Do not peel off your skin. Yeah. Don't peel off your skin. <laughs> I heard a story once about a man who went to, like, someone I know. I can't remember who it was, but someone I know told me that they went to with their wife to give birth, and then they enjoyed the not so much that wasn't enough for their wife. No. <laughs> I was just told the only thing, my school had, like, an entire assembly because they found kids with NOS. Because they're like, NOS. it will starve your brain of oxygen and you will die. It's a very weird experience having, like, coming up on something and then all the visual effects are only on one person and you can't look at anything else. You go, you, like, you're not looking around at things. You're just like, I'm looking at this one thing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm watching it change. Yeah, this controlled environment, it does make it mm. really, really strange, yeah. right? Especially reading about all of the things and then like, oh yes, those things are, like usually when we do an episode, I'm not like reading about, oh yes, here, here are the effects of this disease and... Yeah. No. Uh, I feel and that as, as the disease takes over my yeah, body. Like, yeah, like <laughs> <laughs> as it subsumes me, you know, it consumes me, like oh, <laughs> you know, have first-hand experience whilst you're reading about the others of the plague. <laughs> right. So I've released a bunch of rats and fleas into the room, <laughs> and we're going to slowly get the plague whilst we describe it. Well, we could do another COVID episode. Oh, uh, <laughs> no. no. <laughs> I've been saving this one since 2020. <laughs> <laughs> I coughed in a petri dish every day. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good video. That a good video. <laughs> no, I think someone did that. I think that um, oh, is it? Oh, what's his name? There's a YouTuber who did that where he like got someone to make cheese out of his bacteria. Oh, really? It was someone who just got like a, a cheesemonger to make cheese out of their a cheese mongrel. <laughs> a cheese monger. <laughs> <laughs> Go cheese monger. Anyway, Go make my cheese. There was a YouTuber who made cheese out of themselves, basically. I like that idea. Yeah. I would eat my own cheese. <laughs> <laughs> so that would be pretty much everything on magic mushrooms. I do want to talk really briefly about their sort of medical uses. Have mm. you heard of anything about that, either of you? Well, there's a lot of research saying they're good for um, depression and good for uh, PTSD mm -hmm. and things like that. Because basically what they do is they make it so that your brain, your brain's default way of talking to the rest of it is broken down and sort of there's communication from all parts of the brain to all parts of the brain Ooh. like cross communicate and that's partly why you get some of the sort of funny colors and and what looks like oh my goodness woo <laughs> <laughs> wow that's fun um <laughs> just gonna entertain everyone here whoa uh, <laughs> Wait, no, and the people that's... watching at home just like <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, just, can you can you finish your... <laughs> um yeah um yeah and so yeah if you can like sort of this is a, a, not a scientific explanation and it might be wrong as well because I've not done my research. But it's something like my understanding is like bits of the brain can talk to other bits of the brain more openly rather than maybe the hard line mm. way that you've you've um, developed, which might be because of trauma, things like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you can sort of reset into a new way of your brain speaking to other bits of your brain. Yeah. And that might make you happier than the <laughs> previous version. Uh, but it also can make you much worse. Yes. Yeah. If you, yeah, yeah. If you reset in a worse way, not good. If you reset in a better way, wonderful. I've seen a lot of, um, not like stories, like a, a lot of people that are like dying in hospital are given like oh, yeah. psychedelic stuff. And they like accept and death. They, but they accept yeah. death, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
just opens up. <laughs> it's amazing. I, I know that sounds great. It just sounds terrifying. Like, here you go. I am ready for oh, death. Oh, we already. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, but yeah, no, like it is, that is really good, right? Like yeah. it's, um, I mean, we've got the biggest um, trial on magic r- mushrooms in relation to sort of depression. Um, treatment of depression, I should yeah. say. Um, it just happened. <laughs> If mushrooms are making you depressed, <laughs> here you go. <laughs> Eat up. Eat up. Eat up. Eat up. Eat up. Eat Hey, look, you know, Teen Girl magazines are just going to have to <laughs> cut out the middleman at some point, right? <laughs> just eat these mushrooms. No, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's just all the, the, the emo is dying. Release the mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I just like the idea that you get, like, magazine like kid magazine and it comes with a free toy but it's a free dose of mushrooms <laughs> <laughs> yeah just for little girls so that they oh, <laughs> you know. grow ham. <laughs> whoa There's so many things on the back of my eyes anyway carry on <laughs> <laughs> so the world's largest trial on whether magic mushrooms can treat How depression big was he sorry <laughs> <laughs> he's the largest trial in the world he's fucking massive <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so the idea mm-hmm. is that they they're they're trying to treat depression with psilocybin. I should be clear as well that this is with this is in sort of a, a controlled environment yeah. with um, therapy as mm-hmm. well. So it's not just like here's a mushroom. Oh man, I feel like I feel better now. It's yeah. here's a mushroom and also therapy. Well, in many cases I've read um, about it's like actually the the, mu- the mushroom being allowed to just like or whatever you take the psychedelic doing its work is what causes the benefit. But the therapist is there in case anything comes up and also to steer you away to from guide anything it. bad. Yeah. But a lot of the times I've read, the therapist doesn't really do anything. They just, they're just they there as like almost like a first aider. Oh, yeah. No, that's, that's what's so amazing about it is that it's not it's not the therapy. Like it, you take a thing and your brain's it's like your brain's natural state. It helps your brain get back to its natural state of like stuff's all right. <laughs> um, and the therapist can help you not get to stuff's real bad. But like it's amazing that it's just it's sort of a miracle um, drug. It's, if if we could patent it, it would be the kind of thing that we call a miracle drug <laughs> oh, yeah. in 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 uh, pharmacology, right? Yeah. So, no, I yeah. think what I what I was trying to get at, I think, is more sort of that. Like, I think a lot of people have a lot of blocks in place, like mental barriers in place, mm. right? That you've got to dig through yeah. in therapy. And I think you know psychedelics probably let a few of those fall away, right? Yeah. And yeah. aid therapy in in what it's. But you're so right. Like, yeah. Actually, yeah. No. Yeah. And there are examples of like people who take like people with PTSD. Again, quoting off memory, I'm not done my research, etc. Um, that are like two trips and that's it. They don't they like their PTSD is cured. Yeah. Which is ju- like, why are we not doing that with um, people with PTSD? Yeah. Obviously, I know. Oh, hey, why are we not giving them drugs? <laughs> no, like, but no, I agree. To be clear, Psy Guys does not endorse or encourage the use of illicit drugs. Yeah, uh, no, yeah. but I encourage the use of like where we can create therapeutic settings for this stuff. Yeah, it's so powerful. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. It's so much more powerful than anything we have. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I totally agree. I think we need to have more studies on this, and I'm really glad that they're kind of being done now despite you know it being a very very controlled Mm. substance right but yeah um i want to i want to be clear don't just take this because you think it is going to make you feel good it's not gonna yeah yeah yeah. if you've got problems like it might not help you know um get involved in a trial speak to a doctor i mean if we talk about other medical uses as well though like outside of sort of mental health i think we spoke on the podcast before as well about um it being used to help with tinnitus and things like that. Yeah, I don't know anything scientifically about that, but like, I, I going off memory, it was something around the idea. Like the theory was that if your tinnitus was caused by like your the the audio signals from your ear reaching you in whatever you are, um, and there's some kind of interference along along that sort of line, almost yeah. like an electrical signal, then if it could just find that if your hearing could find a different path, you wouldn't have the tinnitus anymore. Oh yeah, 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 because it's ultimately if there's something being generated inside of the brain at some point, if it can either decide not to do that anymore or it can yeah. go around it, great! Like yeah. that would be so good. I think that's a brilliant place to end on. There's just one thing left to do. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's the quick fire quiz. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Magic Truffles Edition. So the rules for the quick fire quiz are the same as always. I'll ask one question. That's one question between the two of you. The first person to buzz in with the correct answer after finish asking the question wins. What do they win, Luke? To be honest, the prize is that you get to just stop trying to pretend to be a podcast person yeah. <laughs> and just 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 vibe on your on your truffles. <laughs> <laughs> That's the prize, and we both win. <laughs> <laughs> and what's your buzzer, Noah? Ah. And Luke, what's your buzzer? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> My question for you is: What is the active ingredient in magic mushrooms? Uh. Yes, Noah. Psilocybin. 
Very good. And for a bonus point, what is that uh, metabolized into? Silobin. Silosin. Silosin. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah. You both win a point, which means you both get the prize. But before... <laughs> Before we go, we'd like to thank all of our patrons with an extra special thank you to executive producers Denito and Glitchrabbit. And thank you for watching. You can find the full references for this episode down in the description. Subscribe to new episodes every Sunday. And why not leave us a nice wee comment? Support the pod at patreon.com forward slash sci guys. Or you can find and contact us at sci pod on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and at sci guys on TikTok too. <sighs> Or you can send us an email at SciGuysPod at gmail.com. That's SciGuysPod at gmail.com. SciGuysPod. At gmail.com. You can follow me at NotCore everywhere. You can follow me at Luke Cuffold everywhere. You can follow me at Nerfins everywhere apart from Twitter where it's Nerfin Adam and TikTok where it's The Nerfins. Bye. Bye. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Bye.